doing a M site uh, PRP uh, injection today. So what we're doing is we're drawing a 30 cc uh, blood sample here, and we're going to take this 30 cc's, put it through the M site double spin system, concentrate the platelets in uh, probably about three cc's of plasma, and inject them into my right knee. This is step number one. We do the uh, blood draw. As you can see, I'm a very vascular person. Is How it because you work out? Um, is it because you work out? I think it's because you work out. Yeah, it's probably because I work out pretty hard. Or maybe it's just genetics. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. This is step number one. I'm going to take, um, take you guys through this whole process uh, with me being uh, the uh, guinea pig model. to doing my injection and getting some new x-rays here at Restore. We have a digital x-ray system, doing a lateral view right here, getting my x-rays done. You're welcome. Okay, here we go. I am at uh, the uh, x-ray tech station here, looking at my sunrise view. There's my sunrise view. You can see my old screws from my Emsley Triot tibial tubercle surgery that I had at Shriners Hospital many, many, many years ago. And you can see that the patellofemoral joint is somewhat uh, destroyed here. You really don't see a sulcus. Um, my patella used to track over there. Then they did the uh, medialization. Not much of any joint space at all. And let's see what the lateral looks like. Lateral view, patella baja, old screws, osteophytes, very, very tight looking patellofemoral joint. And then we look at the uh, PA weight bearing view. Still got a little bit of space there, not too bad. Medium to, medium to large osteophytes. Narrowing, flattening, flattening of the condyle. Hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle from an old trauma that I had as a child. Okay, uh, not much has changed, but basically what, what you see here is post-traumatic osteoarthritis, uh, which uh, is due to my uh, car accident that I had many years ago. Okay, so this is the way my knee looks. So one of the reasons why I don't, uh, I'm not that eager to get a knee replacement right now uh, is because of this scar. See, the scar has uh, adhered itself to the bone below. See how it doesn't move? I mean, this tissue moves, this tissue moves, but that tissue does not move. And that's because it's actually adhered to the condyle. So if I have a knee replacement, when they place the instruments between the bone and the skin, there's a possibility that an instrument might actually poke through the skin, but which we, uh, which we term buttonhole. So I have, a, uh, I have a situation here that puts me at high risk of complications following a knee replacement. And you saw the x-ray. I don't really have a, a, a normal anatomy. So for now, what I do is um, I get PRP injections and I also support my knee with a brace. I use this, uh, 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 this liner here, which works really nice. It's, uh, it's made by Repairl. It's a company called Repairl. You can see the label right there. It, it's very, a really nice liner. And then currently I'm using a very simple unloading brace, very light. It's uh, soft, circumferential compression. And this one is uh, by Oser. It's a form fit medial unloading brace. Very easy to put on. It goes like this. The, the hinge is on the inner side, which is perfect. When the hinge is on the inner side, um, it, um, it makes the knee look less bowed. So my knee's already bowing a little bit. The last thing I wanna do is, is make it look more bowed. So if you have the hinge on the inner side, it gives the, uh, the appearance that it's less bowed, which is really nice, especially when you use skinny pants like I do. Just wanted to share that with you. Thanks. We're on the second spin now. This is our centrifuge. Uh, we've already removed the red blood cells from my blood sample, and what is being spun out is the remaining plasma, which contains platelets as well as proteins. Uh, once the platelets are concentrated, at the bottom of the little plastic sterile canister, then we will resuspend it in a, in a few cc's of plasma. And that's the next step. Here we go, we're all getting all ready here. Uh, my A team is getting ready, they're doing this for me. Uh, I'm very, very lucky that I'm in this field because I can get this treatment done at my convenience and with uh, top-notch people doing it for me.
So very excited about getting this uh, done today. So what we have now is uh, the sample after the second spin in the centrifuge. And this is what we have. So um, after my 30 cc blood draw, we have 13 cc's of plasma. Now, way at the bottom, I'm gonna uh, focus right there. You see uh, there's actually a fuzzy uh, layer, which is at the bottom of the canister. Those are the platelets. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave them uh, leave them be for now uh, and uh, gently remove what we don't want. So all I want is three C's remaining because I want a very high concentration sample uh, injected into my knee. So we're going to remove everything except for three C's. Once the three C's are in there, we're going to swirl gently and uh, lift the plate that's off the bottom of that container, lift them off, uh, resuspend them, and then put them in a sterile syringe uh, ready for injection. Once again, platelet-rich plasma using the pure PRP uh, m site system over here. And this is for me, Dr. Steve Mora, for the treatment of my post-traumatic arthritis. And the platelets right there uh, on the left side, platelets are suspended. And yes, there we go. That's the fluid that's going to go in. So uh, that there's probably eight times the normal concentration of platelets in there based on the normal amount of platelets in blood, 150 to 450 per microliters. And since here we have uh, we have a high concentration, eight times normal. We probably have almost a, uh, probably about a billion cells per ml using the supra physiologic uh, platelet rich plasma system from M site. We got some Hibiclens here to keep things nice and clean. Ready here, they got my ultrasound ready. Sonocyte ultrasound, musculoskeletal ultrasound. We got that ready. We're going to do it in this position here, lying down. I got my stance socks, never leave home without them. And uh, we're going to get ready here. We're going to mark off the anatomy here. A little externally rotated, but that's how I get the patella up. Aiming at the sky. We've already marked the spot. Dr. Jovanovich has his, uh, his uh, landmark ready to go. And I, I go back like this. I relax. And we do the shot. So my knee's pretty uh, sensitive. Uh, that's why... I don't like just anybody injecting it because it kind of freaks me out. I'm no different than any other patient, to be quite honest. Patients, uh, patients are very anxious when their knees are getting injected. Actually, most of them are, and I'm no different. The difference with my knee is my anatomy is, uh, is uh, different. It's been altered, altered by surgery, altered by the accident. So it takes a little bit more patience and understanding of the anatomy by feeling it and, and uh, taking time to making sure that the injection is being put into the right spot. Right now, the lidocaine is injected just under the skin and, and subcutaneous tissue, but not very deep at this moment. We see, I... yeah, just go underneath the patella. I mean, I can see that, yeah, just basically go underneath the patella and as long as we're underneath the kneecap, so we're, that's the patella right there. And then, and so if I go, yeah, there's a space right there. You see how there's some fluid there. You can tell there's fluid in there, right? Yeah. It's a little bit uh, swollen today, but um, it's probably why it's hurting me a little bit more than normal. Nothing crazy. Just trying to get my maintenance. This is, this, this is the surface of the patella? Yeah. Here. That's all tendon right there. This is a bursa. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fluid, space. Fluid sac and there's a, a continuous space that goes under the patella. And then That's what we want. We're going to go right, with, right, right below that quadriceps tendon. One shot, one kill. Aye. 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 Okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Going slow, filling up the joint with the PRP right now. Yeah, we got about half of it in there. We had to stop because it was really hurting me. But um, after a few um, minutes of gentle movement, it felt better. So let me see if we can get a little bit more in right now. That's what we're going to do again. Dr. Jovanovich, can you uh, uh, give the uh, the folks some uh, tips on uh, on what you do to do a nice, a near painless injection 
so that it increases the accuracy and the success of, of this injection as well as any other into the knee. So I employ a gait theory, uh, which states that you can feel uh, one of two sensations, pain or deep pressure, but not both at the same time. So what I typically do is I like to grab the skin and I like to pinch it and lift it up. And contrary to popular belief, a skin wheel is not the best way to anesthetize the skin. What I do is I grab the skin, I lift it up, and I go immediate, uh, perpendicular to, um, to the skin, and I go about three millimeters subdermal, and then it'll infiltrate the area with one or sometimes two mil, uh, cubic centimeters or milliliters of um, lidocaine, one to two percent, mixed with bicarbonate to uh, make it um, more basic, uh, less acidic, or closer to neutral, actually. And so that enhances uh, the block, and it also makes the injection of lidocaine less painful because the more acidic an injection is, the more uh, burning it becomes when it enters the subdermal space. So all the receptors for the uh, skin are actually under um, the surface. There are some uh, pressure and stretch receptors in the skin and uh, muscle and tenders underneath. I do not want to go into the muscle, however. I place the medication subdermally. Do a small leg, numb up uh, a wide area, and the biggest secret to successful injection on my end is actually allowing the local anesthetic to work, which seems to elude a lot of people. Normal time for lidocaine is about two minutes, and almost no one waits that long. They want to inject after 30 seconds uh, or 20 seconds, and the area is not numb. So I clean the area, I numb, and then I continue to work on my setup, and I intentionally make it last at least two to three minutes. There was zero lidocaine in injected to the joint space. Everything was subdermal okay. and a good enough volume to uh, create comfort for the injection into the bursa continuous with the rest of the knee joint. Uh, what happened immediately after the injection, there was an intense inflammatory response that created both pain and distension of the knee joint capsule. Yes, and I felt that pain. That's why I stopped recording, because for about five minutes, um, there was an intense um, uh, pressure feeling, um, and uh, that's how we we, uh, we turned the recording off for a second. But then after a few minutes, then I was fine. So and that's that's my experience with my own patients as well. So once again, uh, minimal to no uh, lidocaine in the joint. That way we don't uh, damage platelets, uh, acid base in there, and then uh, fill up the joint with super high concentrations, super physiologic concentrations. And as you can see, my knee is a little puffy right there. Uh, it's been injected. I get to move it now. And another trick that Dr. Jovanovich does is he applies a little traction to my leg. Can you just show that how you just apply a little traction? He pulls on it. So I pull this way. And then at the same time, I also distract the knee mm -hmm. cephalad and caught at going this way and that way. And that puts a stretch on the knee joint capsule and the knee joint itself and um, allows the PRP to move into the area of uh, inflammation that is otherwise tight and inaccessible because the fluid will follow the path of least resistance. So we want to spread the magic in all the tight and hard to reach places by creating a negative pressure inside the knee joint with distraction. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference. So if you're getting this injection, uh, when, when you're getting it done and you feel that intense uh, pressure not a bad idea to have the doctor just gently pull on the pull on the leg and it, it seems to relieve some of the, the the pain which happened immediately so once again play the rich plasma dr Dubanovich doing my procedure he's one of the few guys uh that actually injects my knee to be quite honest he's the only guy that injects my knee um uh, ultrasound uh high uh physiologic concentration prp for osteoarthritis there's been some studies that show that it helps you can look up uh, a patel at all American Journal of Sports Medicine, and then there's um, Halpern et al., both uh, published reports that talk about uh, osteoarthritis and how PRP can improve it. Just wanted to share my experience with everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Steve Mora uh, and uh, recording PRP injection here at Restore. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Let me know if we can help. Cheers. Cheers.